Hey guys, welcome to this video on solving uh, equations with radicals. This is part one. So in this video, we're going to talk about what, what you do if you have just one square root. So we're going to look at problems that look like this. Um, if you have multiple square roots, that creates a whole other issue. So that's going to be for another video. So this is just kind of the basics. As a reminder, just remember to pause to try the examples when prompted and there are always free guided notes available. So let's just get going here. Um, so what is the technique here? So in general, when you have something set up like this, there's a couple of basic things you want. You want to have the radical isolated on one side and everything else isolated on the other side. And so since we have that here, then what you want to do is square both sides. So I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm squaring both sides. So when I square a radical, that actually will just kind of cancel out the whole radical. So this will just give me 3x plus 1, and then 4 squared is 16. After you square both sides, then you want to solve as usual. So in this case, I'll go ahead and I'll subtract the 1 from each side. Now I get 3x equals 15, divide both sides by 3, and x equals 5. Now, it's really important actually with these that you check your solutions. So let's do that real quick. So if I plug this back in, this becomes 3 times 5 plus 1. So this is going to ultimately be the square root of 16. So that does indeed equal 4, so we're good to go here. Now you might be wondering why am I kind of harping on this? Why do I say we have to check the solutions? So the reason is that with radical equations, something kind of strange can happen. You can have what's known as extraneous solutions. So extraneous solutions, they are ones that don't actually work. So when you plug them back in, you'll notice right away that it, it's not going to work. It gives you something untrue. So now I want you to give this technique a try. So pause the video and hit play when you're ready. So first things first, you're going to square both sides. So then I get 3x plus 1 on this side, and 8 squared is 64. So now I'm just going to solve as usual. So I'll go ahead and subtract 1 from each side. So I get 3x equals 63. And then if I divide both sides by 3, I ultimately get that x equals 21. So now what I want to do is I want to do a real quick check here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. So 3 times 21 plus 1. So let's go ahead and work all of this out. So this becomes 63 plus 1. 63 plus 1 is 64. And the square root of 64 is 8. So this one's OK. We can keep going. So now what I want you to do is uh, I want you to try these. So remember, the whole thing here is you have to actually isolate the radical first. So hopefully you notice here, the first thing that you're going to want to do is actually subtract off these numbers um, before you do anything else. Hit play when you're ready. So for a here, so first things first, like I said, we're going to subtract off the 2. So now I've got the square root of 5x, uh, make a better 5, some, for some reason I always have trouble making 5s. 5x minus 4 equals 6, and now I can square both sides. So now I've got 5x minus 4 equals 36, and I'll just go ahead and I'll solve as usual. So I ultimately get that 5x equals 40, and if I divide both sides by 5, I will get that x equals 8. So we do a real quick check here. And so notice when I actually plugged this in, so I used this original format of the problem, even with the plus 2 at the end, so that I could check all of this. Okay, so now let's try this next one. So I'll start by subtracting off the 5, and I get the square root of 1 plus 3x equals negative 3. Now you might actually notice there's an issue with this right out of the gate, um, and if you do, kudos to you. So you can't actually have a square root equal a negative number. But if you didn't notice that, um, I want to just show you what happens. This kind of helps make part of my point. So I'm going to square both sides. And so when I square this, so remember, I'm squaring all of this. So this will ultimately, ultimately become positive. So I've got 1 plus 3x equals positive 9. And so now I'm going to go through, and I'm just going to finish, finish solving this. So this is almost going to look like a little bit silly. But I get uh, 3x equals 8, divide both sides by 3, I'll get x equals 8 over 3. Okay, so go with me here for a second. It's not that it's a fractional answer, that's not why this is actually weird. 
I want to show you what this actually does. So let me plug this in to the check. So I've got 1 plus 3 times 8 over 3 plus 5. Okay, so when I multiply these together, so I've got 3 times 8 over 3, so these 3's actually just end up canceling out, so I'm just left with the 1 plus 8. And so then I get the square root of 9 plus 5, and so then I ultimately get that this equals 3 plus 8, or th sorry, 3 plus 5, and that equals 8. That is not equal to the 2. So this is actually what I'm talking about. Um, you are going to have situations come up like this where they're going to equal a number. So you found something, and they're going to equal the totally wrong number. Now you might be thinking, oh, well, this was really obvious because this just equals a negative number, so I'm done there. Most of the time, this is not obvious, and you're not going to have any clue that you, you couldn't actually do this. So this is kind of the, the simpler case where maybe it is more clear, but most of the time you can't tell. So now I want to change this to the square root of 5x plus 4 equals x plus 2. What's different about this? Well, when I square it, now what I'm going to end up having to do is this, this is not going to become x squared plus 4. This actually requires me to FOIL. So people usually think of foiling with something like this. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and square both sides. So what I ultimately end up getting is this uh, just 5x plus 4 equals this x plus 2 times x plus 2. And so this is what I'm actually going to have to work out. So let's go ahead and do that. So x times x is x squared, x times 2 is 2x. 2 times x is 2x, and then 2 times 2 is 4. And now I've got to collect my like terms. So I've got 5x plus 4 equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay, and so now I can actually finish this. So notice for this particular problem, this is squared. This is telling me then that I'm instead of having to do what I did in the other problems, I'm actually going to have to probably factor this um, or use some other quadratic method to solve this. So I have to bring everything over to one side. So I'm going to subtract these off. So ultimately, I get x squared minus x equals 0. That's what that's going to come out to. So if I try to factor this, I get x times x minus 1 equals 0. So notice I didn't divide out the x. I want to keep all my x's there. And now I can see that my solutions should be x equals 0 or x equals 1. OK. So now let's go back and actually check that. So I'm going to do a little check here. So let's go piece by piece. So let's start with x equals 0. So if I plug in 0, so I get 5 times 0 plus 4. And I want to know, does that equal 0 plus 2? So ultimately, that just gives me the square root of 4 equals 2. So x equals 0 definitely works. So now let me try the other one. So x equals 1. So in this case, I'm going to get the square root of 5 times 1 plus 4, and I want to see, does that give me 1 plus 2? So this comes out to just the square root of 9 equals 3, so yep, that still works too. So want to keep checking these. All right, so let's try one more of these together. So I'll do this with you again. So we'll begin by squaring both sides. So I get 3x minus 6 equals x minus 2 times x minus 2. So if you want to kind of have a guided example, you can hit pause and multiply this all together and just see kind of what you get and then hit play and I'll, I'll show you what you should actually have to factor here so you can kind of work this out a little bit. So I take 3x minus 6, this is going to be x squared oops, minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. So I get 3x minus 6 equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. And so now I've got to subtract these off. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and then add the 6. So ultimately I need to factor x squared minus 7x plus 10 equals 0. All right. So if I factor this then I get x minus 5 and x minus 2 equals 0. So my solutions here will be x equals 5 and x equals 2. So now I need to do another really quick check. So I'll start with x equals 5. 
So x equals 5 works. So next let me do x equals 2. And they both still work. Alright. So now I have two more for you to try. So remember, you want to have the radical isolated. That's a little hint for you as you go through these. Hit play when you're ready. So first let me start by squaring both sides and I'll go ahead and work this out and foil everything out. Okay, so now I need to bring everything over to one side. So I'll go ahead and I'll subtract off the 2x and I'll subtract off the 4. So now I've got x squared minus 6x ultimately equals 0. So once again, if I factor this, this becomes x times x minus 6 equals 0. So I get either x equals 0 or x equals 6. So now let me do a really quick check on these. And so now we have our first issue actually come up, right? This says that the square root of 4 equals negative 2, and that is not true. So we have to discard the 0. So now let's check the other one. And so the other one works. So this is what it will look like when you actually get one of these extraneous solutions. And so this is why it's important that you actually go through and check. Okay, so like I said, you have to have the, ra the radical isolated in these. So the first things first, you've got to actually subtract off the 5 from each side. And then you can square both sides. So ultimately I get the square root of 5x plus 1, oops, plus 1 equals 3x minus 5. And now this is what I'm going to square. So let me work all that out. So now let me bring everything over to one side and factor. And that one is a little bit trickier to factor, so that may have taken you a little bit of extra work to figure that out. So then if I look for my two solutions, so I get x equals 8 over 9 or x equals 3. Those would be my two solutions in this case. And in the interest of time, so I will just tell you that this one doesn't work, only x equals 3 works in this case. Okay, so that's the first part of this video. In the next part, I will talk about, um, I have another part that will talk about multiple square roots and also higher uh, radicals. So please feel free to move on to the next videos. Um, like, comment, and share if this was helpful to you, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.